coming up in this video how not to burn your hands off. <laughs> Huh, it just says fuse. Maybe the fuse is gone. Do you know what? I'll just shove a bit of wire in there instead of a fuse. Hello everyone. So, what's this video about? Well, quite a few things, but mainly it's about when you have a multimeter that don't work, essentially, because the fuse has blown not to put a piece of wire in. And I'm going to cover why that's so important. But I'm also going to show you a bit of troubleshooting using a little bit of tin foil. But that troubleshooting is literally, disclaimer, it's not to test things on cars after that. It's just to, to find out if you don't have a second multimeter, if the fuse has gone. Or if the fuse hasn't gone. Let's get into it. I've got a box behind me with all my tools in. And my KPS meter, I know for some time, the fuse has gone. So, it ain't someone at Schmiedman who's done it. It's me who did it before I, before I went on my holiday, my father's holiday. Now then, what do you do when you have a meter like this and you don't, you, there's no fuses, you've not got a spur fuse. So, there's a few things you can do to test it. Unfortunately, on this particular model, you can't swap that fuse to that fuse because you're always going to need that fuse. If any of them fuses are out, it won't work. I happen to actually know on this particular model that it's this particular fuse here. This is the this, the milliamp fuse. So that fuse represents the milliamp circuit, not, not the amp circuit. The amp circuit is this 11 amp one. Big problem with, with, with this is, so when you're doing a job, usually you have it on the direct DC voltage setting. Because you're mainly measuring voltage, aren't you? Grounds and stuff like that. But every now and then you might want to measure the quiescent current or the battery drain of a vehicle. Now, there's many ways of doing that. But I still prefer, for absolute accuracy, to put one of these in series, and I'll show you in a minute how to do that. The other way is, in my little toolbox here, you can use amp clamps. These are off my hand tech scope. And I've got a KPS one, which is quite handy, but it's not very accurate. There's too much Twitter on it. Get me? You can measure this with an amp clamp around the thing like that. But you have to zero it every time. And I've had these as much as 100 milliamps out. Well, when you're dealing with something like that, on a circuit, it's only going to be drawing 50, 50 to 70 milliamps and you're showing 170 milliamps. Reality, it could be 70. It's a good one, but it's not so good for automotive. It's too much interference. So, luckily for me, I've got one of these. This is my Maztec. Cheap. 25, 30 euro. It's 10 amp rated. The danger is... Cheap ones like this, for example, when you do this now and you put it on, on voltage setting like this, unfortunately, as you can see there now, it's just working as normal. Now, the other meter, let's turn that off for safety. My other meter, it'll warn you and it'll, it'll say probe. When you put it on voltage and when you take out, when you put your probes in the wrong setting, you've just been doing a battery drain test. And you forgot, so you've left them in the amp setting like that. Or the milliamp setting, it doesn't matter. When you put these on, this one on, it'll warn you. I ain't no cheap meter. I warned the operator by saying, hey, dummo, you forgot to take the test lead from the amp port. Yeah, I know, I'm the best. Cheap ones like that won't, and you'll just, they'll just blow the fuse instantly. Anyway, that's what happened. I went to do a CAN bus check, put it on voltage, and I realised I popped the bloody fuse. Because basically, I've left it in the milliamp one. And then when you're putting this across a circuit, especially ground to positive, this is suddenly becoming a consumer, a resistor, if you like. It's going to blow the fuse. It's instant, instant short circuit. That's why we've got fuses, and that's why we don't bypass them. But what we're going to do, just dead quick now, in case you're not all fair with testing them, there's two, three ways of testing them. So the first one, let's assume you don't have a spur multimeter and you're like, bloody hell, what am I going to do? Dead easy. Kit Kat wrapper or a piece of tin foil. A few moments later. Right, so I decided to go in the kitchen and get a piece of proper just baking tin foil because that uh, sorry state what I was using was crap. Just turn a piece off like that. 
and just Shabula Jackson it like that, Loxy. Like, yay. You could set Fuse out if you want. Maybe we'll have to do. Just mould it on like that. Like that. Just on top of Fuse. Like, yay. The goal is just to, to, to bypass the Fuse, what's blown, and touch both caps like that. And then when we switch it on, we'll find it's, it's magically working. He said Fuse then because it's a bit loose. But you get the idea. It's working, right? And of course, you can take the fuse out. So, the next thing to do is a concept. If, if you have got a meter, you don't have to do it that way, the dangerous way. Take the fuse out, and we do a continuity test across the fuse. And lo and behold, there's no continuity, is there? Because fuse is blown. Like that. Just across both caps, just like, just like, yay. Just across the caps like that. Each end of the metal bit, just straight across it like that. Yeah, buggered. And then we can do the same with the other one then, you see. Just to be sure. Now, I tested this fuse at the time and it had continuity and I was like, oh, bloody hell, my meter broke. So we're going to put that one back in now because it's knackered, isn't it? So we need to buy one from Parco. All the way in Vanta. Get our second one. This is our 11 amp. This is the amp one. The other was a milliamp one. Perfect continuity. Nothing wrong with that one. So the amp circuit's okay, but the milliamp circuit had gone. There are the two ways of testing them. Testing. Just because you've got a can bus measurement afternoon, you've been daft like me, and you've blown the current side up, the fuse, and it don't work. It don't mean you've got any right to do that. Because the danger of that is just like what we saw in the video this becomes a consumer now it can happen that fuse if there's no fuse in that and some some bright spark let's say you're measuring battery some bright spark tries to crank the engine you're going to have 200 amps running through the ground to the starter motor but crucially through your meter ordinarily the 15 amp fuse is going to blow or in this case 11 amp fuse sorry the 11 amp fuse is going to blow instantly but if you've not got a fuse in you've got a piece of tin foil like this I can promise you that'll take hundreds and hundreds of amps. It'll glow red up, but it'll take hundreds of amps. It'll pop in a, a microsecond, but it'll be enough to set the meter on fire. And I've seen them burn and they stink. And I've seen the display smash on one. I, it happened to somebody in England 15 or 20 years ago when I was a young lad. Someone did it with a flute meter and it literally got so hot, it melted the plastic, burnt his hand, and it blew the screen apart. <laughs> One of our top fault finders is in the burns unit now. Yeah. Lost a finger. Put a bit of wire in place of the fuse in his meter. Terrible. It literally blew up. But he'd put in a piece of wire, not one of these. A piece of copper wire, a thick piece of wire, as thick as that fuse is even more dangerous, because that will not burn. That will not burn. He was measuring a drain, and some bright spark come along and cranked the engine, and he had hold of it in his hand. Right? And the lad didn't realise... He didn't tell him to crank the engine, but he did. And this lad was also a bit numb and he didn't drop the meter straight away. And it literally smoked and burned on all the flute thing that was running down his wrist. <laughs> Got a big scar now all the way down his arm, rest of his life. He lost most of, the, uh, he lost a finger, I think. And he lost all the flesh off the palm of his hand. His hand's all shriveled up now and manky like this, you know. It's like it's like that, his hand now. It's like a claw. All his muscles fused together. Honest, I'm not joking. So there's a, a method to my madness why I'm making this video, essentially. So that's the two kind of ways you can actually do it. And here's another test for you. So essentially, this is another way of doing it. We know we've got a milliamp fuse gone in this one. Get your other meter, if you've got one, set it up to continuity, which is that little strange looking symbol there. Ground in the comp port, voltage in the voltage one, the red one in the. Let's look at the one that hasn't blown. The 11 amp one, the big one in the amp one is fine. So all you need to do is ground it to the comp port on the meter. Make sure the meter's switched off. You're only measuring this circuit. And as you can see, we've got perfect continuity because we, we've not got a blown, blown fuse, have we? on the 11 amp circuit. If we go to the 440 milliamp fast blow fuse, as you can see, we've got no continuity, have we? And the reason is because the fuse is gone. So let's now put a piece of tin foil in and try that again. Pull this out. 
This is our fast blow 440 job for the milliamp circuit. And again, you might be a mechanic, but you might not have thought of ever diagnosing your multimeter. Or if you're not familiar and you've got a multimeter and you know you know this is the safe way to at least diagnose it but we're never going to use it like this remember in our little video same test again you got perfect continuity it's really quite basic circuit testing isn't it yeah looks like ben johnson was right replacing a fuse with a bit of wire is proper dangerous lucky it didn't take my hand off You didn't put a piece of wire in instead of a fuse, did you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks for subscribing, by the way, to my last two videos. I've got around 250 new subscribers from two videos I did a couple of days ago. So I'm very pleased about that. So if you could just please press that subscribe button, it does help. And I'll get to my 100,000 subscribers one day because I really want, essentially, more than anything else in the world, to have a get rid of that crap picture behind and put me silver youtube hundred thousand uh, subscriber trophy thing on the wall that'd be a dream for me but most importantly i just want to reach people who are struggling in automotive technology if you're a mechanic or you're a fault finder or you're not a fault finder or you're a diyer you're sure to find someone on my channel that's going to help you do a bit better at work we all had to start somewhere i was absolutely hopeless me when i was 19 i had a bad attitude and i couldn't uh, do anything i was useless now i'm pretty good fault finder aren't I? and i'm known the world over anyway see you next time for some more fantastic automotive cool videos for more advanced fault finding tips like these make sure you hit the subscribe button and i'll see you in the next video